So our scripture today is, uh, is, is uh, in John chapter 7, verses uh, 37 through 39. And, the, and the, uh, the title of it is The Fountain of Living Water. And we're going to read from that in just a bit. But I'd like to start this morning off with a, with a little story about a fellow some of you may be familiar with. Thomas Edward, or T.E. Lawrence, was born on August 16th, 1888 in Wales, better known as Lawrence of Arabia. Lawrence became famous for his exploits as British military liaison to the Arab Revolt during the First World War. The desert raids of British officer T.E. Lawrence and his Arab rebels tied down many Turkish troops who could have been fighting the main British armies in the Middle East. Lawrence of Arabia's struggle against the Turks during World War I was a classic of guerrilla warfare and his personal account has become a classic of world literature. And of course, many of you have seen the movie, hopefully, maybe not. If you haven't, just check it out. It's about the life of Lawrence of Arabia. He wrote about his Arabian adventures in the Seven Pillars of Wisdom. And during the war, Lawrence formed close friendships with many of the sheiks of Arabia. After the war, he brought some of these sheiks back to England to show his appreciation for their support against the Turkish domination. And they had a wonderful visit, appeared before the Joint House of Commons in Parliament, and had an audience with the Queen. And on the last night of their visit, Lawrence offered them anything they wanted to take back with them to their desert homes. And they led, they led him up to the hotel room, into the bathroom, and pointed to the faucets in the bathtub. And they said that they wanted to take these faucets with them that would provide them with running water in the deserts. They didn't realize that the faucets were superficial. Behind them was plumbing, a hot water heater, an energy source that heated the water, a, a city main that supplied the water. And from the city main went a line to an outside source of water. The magic is not in the faucet. It is what is behind the faucet that gives the water. And the faucet can be 24 karat gold, but if it's not attached to a water supply, it's useless. The magic, again, is not in the faucet. The power comes from what is behind the faucet. Things that are not visible to the human eye, but are there nonetheless. If the pump or the plumbing, or the reservoir ever go out of service, the faucet is useless. It's what's behind the faucet that gives it its power. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to talk, or I want to say this morning is this, the faucet is necessary to give the water to where it needs to be. So I don't want to minimize the importance of a vessel or a faucet, because God needs vessels, he needs faucets. God has always worked through human vessels, and in fact, most of the time, God works through m the most unlikely vessels. God can use anyone. Moses stuttered. Moses stuttered. David's armor didn't fit. John Mark was rejected by Paul. Timothy had ulcers. Am Amos, his only training was in the school of a fig tree pruning. Jacob was a liar, David had an affair, Solomon was too rich, Abraham was too old, David was too young, Peter was afraid of death, Lazarus was dead, John was self-righteous, Naomi was a widow, Paul was a murderer, and so was Moses. Jonah ran from God, Miriam was a gossip, Gideon and Thomas both doubted, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Man, it, sorry, just kidding, he was, a, he was depressed. He was suicidal. Elijah was burned out. Martha was a worry wart. Mary may have been lazy. Samson had long hair. Noah got drunk, and that's not all. That's not all. Did I mention that Moses had a short fuse? But God doesn't require a job interview. <clears throat> he doesn't hire and fire like most bosses because he's more our dad than our boss. 
He doesn't look at financial gain or loss. He's not prejudiced or partial, not judging or grudging, sassy or brassy, not deaf to our cry, not blind to our need. A Christian minister once said, I was never of any use until I found out that God did not intend me to be a great man. I absolutely love that. I was never of any use until I found out that God did not intend me to be a great man or a great woman. God needs us to be the faucets, especially today in our, in our church family here. He needs us to be faucets. In John 7, 38, we read, or we'll read, that he that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. God can have all the plumbing in place have the pump hooked up, ready to pour our blessings on, ready to pour out blessings on his people, on the world, but he needs us to be vessels. He needs us to be that faucet. And in many cases, the only thing that stops a move of God is the lack of a vessel. When Elijah <clears throat> was performing a miracle for the prophet's widow, and the oil was flowing freely, the Bible says in Second kings and it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son bring me yet a vessel and he said unto her there is not a vessel more and the oil stayed the only thing that stopped the flow of oil was the lack of a vessel I don't I can't explain why God decides to use imperfect vessels to accomplish his work. Maybe you do. It doesn't make sense to me that this God who can do all things would choose to restrict himself to moving through imperfect, flawed, inconsistent humanity. I don't know why the Creator chooses to move through his creation. But God is always seeking for men and women through which to move. And at the day of Pentecost, God poured out His Spirit upon all flesh. He was filling His vessels. We read in Isaiah chapter 43, I will work, and who will let it? God needs a vessel to... Uh, he, he also needs a vessel through which to work. Ezekiel said that God was seeking a man to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. When the Lord struck Saul from his horse on the road to Damascus, he then told Saul, go see Ananias. He will tell you what to do. So God then used a human vessel. And in the book of Revelation, John says that God wept because he could find no man to open the book of salvation. And so God himself took on that form of man to bring redemption. So... Do you understand how important you are to the work of God? God will not move without a vessel, without you, without me. God will not pour out His Spirit without a faucet for it to flow through. So we are the, we are the faucet. You are the faucet. God needs you and He needs me. Now the second thing I'd like to talk about this is, is this. Even though God needs us, we cannot afford to take the glory for what only God can do. I am a faucet, but I must remember that there is no magic in this faucet. It's what is behind the faucet, faucet that counts. And if the power supply ever gets shut off behind the wall, I'm useless. This faucet is useless. I may still look good, may still sound uh, and say the same things, may still appear to be the same, but if my power supply is shut off, I am of no use to anyone. We read in Romans chapter 7, verse 18, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwell no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. I must understand that I am only the vessel 
the conduit, the faucet. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, we read, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The power is God's. I am only the earthen vessel. I can't sing well enough. I can't preach well enough to duplicate what God can only do. If we look at Romans chapter 12, verse 3, it says, For I say, though through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according, to, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So no matter how much God moves through us, remember that it is God and not us. No matter how much preaching and teaching comes forth from us, we must never forget that it is what's behind the faucet that makes all the difference. No matter how many good things happen through us, we're only the faucet. There is a power supply behind us, and if that is ever cut off, we're useless. In our, in our text this morning, Jesus is teaching his disciples this very important lesson. They had most likely watched him cast out devils and demons many times before, and they had heard him teach about going into the strong man's house and taking his armor, and they had probably watched as he sent the legion of devils in, uh, into a herd of swine. Numerous times, the scripture speaks of Jesus casting out demons, and and it is probable that the disciples were witnesses to these events. So now they come across a situation that they feel very confident that they can handle. They have watched Jesus do this. They have observed his hand motions, listened to what he said and how he said it. They have the words, the actions, motions, and everything else down pat. But there is one thing missing. They have no power. There is nothing behind the faucet, and they fail miserably at the task at hand. And Jesus takes this opportunity to tell them that there is no magic in the faucet. And in other words, there is no prayer and fasting. If there is no prayer and fasting, there will be no power. There is no magic in the faucet. It's what is behind the faucet that makes the difference. We can say all the right words, do all the right hand motions, use the right tone of voice, but if there's no, pa no prayer and fasting that has taken place behind these walls, our wall, there will be no power coming from the faucet. This kind, of, uh, this kind go out, but not by prayer and fasting. The danger we face is when we try to duplicate through where mere human efforts what can only be produced by God. Preachers get into trouble when they learn how to preach. Singers get into trouble when they learn how to sing. Teachers get into trouble when they learn how to teach. We must never reach the point where we learn how to do what only God can do. I'm never going to become so smart that I don't need God. And I think that sums up all that. Singers can't get into trouble when they learn how to sing. Teachers, you know, we just have to get to that point where we never become so smart that we feel that we don't need God. In the year 1847, a doctor from Edinburgh, uh, Sir James Simpson, discovered that chloroform could be used as an anesthetic to render people insensible to the pain of surgery. And from his early experiments, Dr. Simpson made it possible for people to go through the most dangerous operations without fear of pain and suffering. And some people even claim that this was the, one of the most significant discoveries of modern medicine. And some years later, while lecturing at the University of Edinburgh, Dr. Simpson was asked by one of his students, what do you consider to be the most valuable discovery of your lifetime? To the surprise of the students who had expected him to refer to chloroform, <clears throat> Dr. Simpson replied, my most valuable discovery was when I discovered myself a sinner and that Jesus Christ was my savior. 
So the most valuable discovery that you or I can make this morning is this. No matter how smart we are, no matter how well we preach, no matter how well we teach, no matter how hard we, we can sing, how well we can organize, we are just a sinner saved by grace. And there is no power in us. We are just the faucet, the conduit, the vessel through which His power moves. And there is no magic in the faucet. We need Jesus. So, my question is, who wants to check their water source this morning? Are we sure that our pipes are not clogged? Amen. Lord, we just again thank You for this time that we spent together. Lord, sometimes we can go on and just go ahead of You. But Lord, we just want to stay one step behind You, but close enough that we can feel Your presence and, and hear Your call and, and, and feel uh, what, you're, what it is that You will have us do. Father, we thank You again for this time together. We pray for all those prayer requests that we had, that we heard, and those, Lord, that haven't been mentioned, those silent prayers, Lord. We, we pray that You'll hold them up. And again, we pray for this, this day. We pray for the week ahead of us. We have so much going on here. We pray for smooth transitions with Messiah, all those that are involved. Uh, Lord, we pray that that music will fill the, uh, will, will explode out the windows and, and fill this community to, to, to change lives. Uh, we pray that people will be touched by uh, the gifts that you've given all these musicians. Father, again, we just thank you. Pray for a, helpful, uh, a healthy week. We pray for our, our uh, families. We pray for those that are traveling abroad. Um, and we just love you, Lord, and we just pray all this in your name. Amen.